from the day I was born. I swore to myself. I swore to my family. That no matter what, no matter how desperate for views I became, no matter how badly I wanted cheap internet clout, I would never stoop, never allow myself to do something stupid just for views. To never make a fool of myself just for mere attention. I was above all that. I don't need the clicks. Anyways, you want to watch me microwave some Lego? Okay, okay, so before I get into all that, I at least want to kind of keep my promise to myself by making this video at least semi-educational-ish. And to do that, we're going to follow the scientific method, and I use that term loosely here, by making some predictions. Prediction number one, the Lego will melt. And now you might be saying, well, yeah, no dip, Sherlock. And that's what brings me to my second prediction. The Lego will take a lot longer than you expect to melt. And that all has to do with how microwaves actually heat things up. You see, microwaves use, well, microwaves to heat up your food. And microwaves are, as you might know, a type of electromagnetic radiation, aka it's a type of light. And as you might expect from something with the term electromagnetic in its name, there is in fact a charge associated with these microwaves. You see, the frequency of the microwave radiation in your microwave oven is fine-tuned so that as the radiation starts bouncing around in your oven, it forms what is called a standing wave. And when it forms this standing wave, the positive and negative charge of the wave is flipping around. And that's important because water molecules actually have a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side to them. They're what's called a polar molecule. So what actually happens when you go to microwave something is that as the field reverses polarity, it starts yanking on the water and kind of spinning it around. And as that water becomes more energetic, those molecules start bumping into other molecules in your food and that raises the temperature of your hot pocket. Now, the issue that we run into with Lego is that while a Hot Pocket might have a lot of water in it, Lego is made out of ABS plastic. And the molecular structure for ABS plastic looks like this. Well, actually, that's not really true. It looks more like this. A massive carbon polymer chain, thousands, even millions of atoms across. So while it might be easy enough to rotate a single water molecule around in the oscillating microwave field, getting a massive polymer chain like this to rotate around in the microwave field is quite a bit more difficult. Not to mention the fact that a lot of these polymers are completely tangled together. Obviously, these polymers are still going to absorb the microwave's energy. It's just going to take a lot longer for us to see it. How much longer will it take to see it? Well, that's what we're about to find out. For round one, we're just gonna put the Millennium Falcon in the microwave for 30 seconds. Go ahead and start the clock and we'll speed this footage up a little bit. Two, one, zero. When I opened up the microwave to take a look, the Millennium Falcon was barely even warm. Like you could barely tell a difference. I have seen Lego sets get hotter just by sitting them next to a window on a sunny day. So a mere 30 seconds in the microwave didn't do much at all. For round two, I'm bumping it up to a full five minutes in the microwave. Thank you. 
Now this time, it was a little bit warmer, not by much, but it was noticeable. However, the most noticeable thing about this round is that when you squeeze the falcon, the pieces creak a little bit. They almost sound crunchy, so if you ever go on an all Lego diet, putting them in the microwave first might help crisp them up a little bit. But overall, this is still pretty obviously not melted. Squeaky? Yes. A puddle of plastic? No. All of the pieces are still completely removable, detachable. As you might be able to tell, all of the logos on all of the bricks are still completely legible, completely there, no damage. So for round three, we're going big. We're going to do a full 10 minutes in the microwave. Now, I didn't actually let the Falcon cool down between any of these takes, so this is really more like a full 15 minutes. And you'd better be grateful that we have the ability to speed up footage nowadays, because I'll tell you what, standing there and holding my phone up against the microwave for 10 minutes wasn't the most fun venture. However, after about four minutes, I noticed that it was leaning over, so I opened up the door to check on it real quick. When I picked it up, it was stuck to the paper towel, which was a pretty good sign that it had indeed been melting. And I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to melt this much. I personally thought that it would take a lot longer to get to this point. But I can't say that I was disappointed that it was melting faster than I expected because, well, 10 minutes was gonna be my cap. It's not really a good idea to run a microwave for a super long period of time, and if it didn't melt after 10 minutes, then I was going to need to change up some strategies. Since it was clearly working, I went ahead and just put it back in and restarted the microwave. Now, it wasn't too much longer before it started to smell really, really bad. I was willing to tough out the smell, but I also share this apartment with several roommates, and I didn't want to subject them to the aromas of my science experiment here. So I cut it off with three minutes on the clock, because it did smell exceptionally bad, and Frankly, I don't know what I was expecting. Of course, it's going to smell just absolutely awful. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. Just looking at this footage as I'm doing the voiceover and remembering how awful it smelled is making me gag. Oh my gosh. Zero out of 10, absolutely do not recommend. Now, the Lego bricks were actually very pliable for quite a while after I had taken it out of the microwave, which I wasn't expecting them to be as pliable as they were. I figured they'd be a little melty, a little goopy, but I wasn't expecting the flexibility that I saw. And you know, it wasn't like floppy or anything, but it was certainly very easy to flex. You had to put almost no pressure on it at all, and the melted pieces would just give. Now, I also think it's really interesting where the melting started. It melted right on the landing foot of the Millennium Falcon. Specifically, the landing foot closest to the cockpit. Just with the shape of the Falcon, those two studs actually bear a larger share of the model's weight. And you might first assume that it is because of that added pressure that that area of the Falcon melted first. However, one thing to know about microwaves is that they don't actually heat things evenly. The standing waves have nodes and anti-nodes, and so areas where the waves fluctuate a lot get a lot more energy, and areas where the standing waves don't fluctuate at all get a lot less energy. So I would suspect that the fact that that particular landing foot melted has more to do with the Falcon's location in the microwave than it does with it being a quote-unquote load-bearing foot. After giving the Falcon a minute to not be so putrid, I brought it up to my room to take a closer look at the damage. And, well, needless to say... That's a lot of damage! First of all, the two studs that did form the landing foot of the Millennium Falcon just completely disintegrated on the paper towel. I mean, 
they did not melt. They just turned into dust. And the paper towel itself was burned completely through. I mean, there is a hole singed into the center of the paper towel. That tells me that this Millennium Falcon was, in fact, not just melting in the microwave, it was actively burning in the microwave. That tells me that putting Lego in the microwave is, in fact, not just a very smelly experiment, but it is also a fire hazard. I was lucky that I stopped it when I did before anything got too burny. I feel somewhat irresponsible even uploading this video to YouTube, but I justify it by saying, you know what, there's going to be some other idiot out there one day who isn't me that's going to try this for cheap YouTube clicks, and it's not going to end well for them. So I may as well put this out since it did end well for me and hopefully dissuade anybody else from trying this themselves. Now, another thing that I did find interesting is the fact that none of the bricks on the backside of the Millennium Falcon really melted that much. I mean, some of them have a little bit of damage, like, for example, this corner plate here is melted a little bit towards the center, but overall, the back is pretty okay. It's only the front and the center that are actually melted. And again, yes, the microwave does melt things unevenly, but I would have expected it to have been uneven symmetrically, as in there would be a melted spot in the middle, a ring around the middle where it's not as melted, and then a ring around the outside where it's melted again. But that is clearly not what happened here. It would be interesting to run this experiment putting the Millennium Falcon in different areas of the microwave to see how it melts, but Again, in retrospect, I realized this is a fire hazard and I won't be doing this again. Anyways, as I got farther and farther to the front of the Millennium Falcon, the pieces became much, much harder to take off. I mean, a lot of these pieces up at the front are just completely fused together, but I wanted to figure out just how many of them were actually fused together and see how far I could take this apart before it just becomes impossible without actually breaking the plastic bonds that have just recently formed. Now, even though the front did melt a lot more than the back, the greebles up at the front were still extremely easy to take off. I mean, the cockpit was easily removable, the greebles on the mandibles, the radar dish, they all came off no problem. It's just some of these larger pieces closer to the front, especially around where that landing gear was, that is, there's no shot of taking it off. Eventually, after a few more minutes of fiddling around with it, I pulled out the brick separator and was able to make a lot more progress in disassembling this thing. Although it really didn't do me all that much more good, this was about as far as I was going to be able to get. These pieces are thoroughly fused together. I was eventually able to muscle off a few more pieces, but that involved breaking some of the plastic bonds, so I'm not really sure if that should count. I was also curious to see what kind of a consistency the really melted area had, and again, this was basically just dust. Again, pointing to the fact that this was not simply melting in the microwave, this was also beginning to catch on fire in the microwave. I reiterate, please don't go and try this at home yourself. Although it ended well for me, I should not have tried this in the first place. Think of this video as a way to tickle that itch and satisfy your curiosity without actually needing to go out and do it yourself. And after scraping off the ash, you can actually see the bubbles that were forming in the Lego plastic, which is pretty cool to see, not gonna lie. And honestly, putting the thing back together after taking it apart was pretty interesting in and of itself. As you would expect, when something melts like this, you cannot put the pieces back together however you want. They can only fit in certain places. Sometimes they just 
pop right out like i actually physically cannot put the landing gear into these studs this set of landing gear only fits in the studs on the left side of the model not the right side of the model they pop out and same deal with some of the other more melted pieces they have to be reassembled together exactly how they were in the microwave otherwise they don't fit but i mean you probably could have guessed that that would be the case I just wish that I had guessed that it would smell this bad. Overall, this was a fun video to make. I would be interested in comparing how different colors of Lego bricks melt in the microwave, and maybe that could tell me something about the properties of the dyes that they use in their bricks. But unless I go out and purchase a cordless microwave and do this in the middle of the desert with a bucket of water by my side, I don't think it's really a smart idea to try it again. I might be acting a little bit overdramatic about this, but fire really isn't something that you want to be messing around with. And I just reiterate again, don't try this yourself. This was stupid. I shouldn't have done this, but after it was all said and done, I already had the footage. Figure I may as well just follow through. If you want to see some slightly less dangerous, kind of, sort of, science-y LEGO content, you can click on this video on the end screen right now, where I calculate how much LEGO it would take before you die from the background radiation of said LEGO bricks. Spoiler alert, it was a huge number. I imagine that you are far more likely to die from breathing in the very smelly, probably highly toxic fumes of microwaved LEGO. Okay, bye!